The documentary delves into the historical and cultural roots of each dance form, highlighting the unique stories and traditions that have shaped them. We see how dance can serve as the means of preserving cultural heritage and promoting social cohesion, as well as a tool for personal expression and creativity. At Esha Kila Blame in Unisha, Mugad in Hitnishna, Class Chief of Bushes Jean, Tolna Dona Kaidi Unidashi J, Padani Dashanella, Tesla Chi Das Kana De Nasha. Hello, my name is Kayla Blayman. I'm from Red Mesa, Utah, and I'm a member of the Navajo, the Navajo people, and I do men's grass dancing within the power circle. <laughs> So men's grass uh, originated with the Northern Plains tribes first as a healing dance. The story goes there was a, uh, a boy who was disabled in one leg and he wanted to walk. So he went to a medicine man and the medicine man told him like, hey, if you want to walk, we'll go out to the prairie and sing a few songs and say a few prayers. And while out there, he had a vision of himself, you know, doing this dance. While he was singing those songs, a storm rolled up and when the storm came, it pushed his limits, it pushed his boundaries. When, when the storm cleared, he got up and then he started to dance. But at first he was rusty. But over time, as he continued to dance, he got mobility in that leg again. And he came back to his village and he was sharing his dance with everyone else. And everyone was, was amazed at like, how he could walk again. It still is considered a healing dance, but now has a lot more creative uh, leeway and a lot more self-expression involved in it. So with my dance in particular, it's a part of the Powell community. It's a part of the Powell circle and it can be used to bring communities together by uh, us performing, us dancing out there and having people to watch and when you create that limitation, you create that barrier like oh you can watch, you can dance and certain times where we can bring everyone together it creates some respect within both parties and both communities and some of the challenges and obstacles within with being a dancer in my form of dance is uh, kind of dealing with outsiders who aren't respectful because there are some times where I'll just be walking to the bathroom or walking to get some food and I'll have strangers just take pictures of me without my permission. They'll be touching my um, regalia without my permission and that's just, at first it doesn't bother me but then it slowly builds on and you're just like, okay, i am had enough of this as well as people trying to appropriate the dance or trying to appropriate the songs, the singing, and they just do it all wrong and it just becomes a complete mess. Nationwide controversy. And another issue or another conflict within performing within PWIs or predominantly white communities is finding that space and finding that time to perform. They'll be watching us and be like, wow, you know, you guys are so exotic, but in reality we're just doing we're just doing our thing for the most part. We're not something primal, we're not something ancient but we're people too, and our art changes as well as it changes with society and it changes with our modern day broader culture. Net the Kama Yan Hopi Matsio Kyang, Kao Sikyaku Yang Pan Tinita, Net Hopi Nungwa, Net Sungo Pungak, but Net Pukosungwa. I am Kao Sikyaku, I am from the Hopi tribe, I'm from the village of Sungo Pavi, and I am from the Bear Strap clan. I didn't grow up out on Hopi, on the reservation, until I was in second grade. Until then, I, I moved back home and I grew up. So in terms of learning my cultural background and identity, um, I didn't learn that until very late, maybe until my teenage years. So the history behind the dances that I do, there's really two types. One is from the Hopi side. And with Hopi, Hopi is very conservative. And so when it comes to dancing, dancing ties a lot of the dancing ties to into ceremonial stuff. And with ceremony, you have to uh, go into the spiritual aspect. And so a lot of that is through sacrifice, discipline, and with that comes with dancing. And then with my other side, I do a lot of powwow dancing. And with powwow, really that belongs with specific tribes, mostly in the northern area, the eastern coast, but as time went on, they became more accepting with other tribes to participate in powwow. And so that's what I do. Um, I do grass, grass and chicken dance. Grass dance is more of 
um, imitating the prairie grass on the plains, and then the chicken dance is, uh, it recreates the, just the promotion of life, of uh, reproduction. I can't really talk about how it brings social change because I don't, I don't really know. But what I do know is that dance can really bring communities together. Because if you look at dance, and in every culture, it's, it's lively, it brings life, it, people get happy, they're happy watching it, they're happy to participate in it. It's just because of that we like to perform and stuff happens beyond our control. But it's been happening way before my lifetime, way before my grandpa's lifetime. Um, when tourists start to become a real big thing, Hopis are crazy and they've done crazy stuff and you see it on the internet or on history books. So it's been done for a long time. And that's just the challenges that I guess we face in this generation with technology, I guess, growing and a lot of other stuff that's making the world complicated. And we're just trying to, we're just trying to keep our culture alive, but we also want to share it. But things like that happen and so we run into problems like that. So about myself, I'm Daniela Thompson. I'm a current student here at SAU. Um, my major is biology. I'm um, originally from Salt Lake. I grew up there and I, my family still lives down there. I went to West High. I, went, I was there all four years. So yeah, I grew up dancing my whole life with my mom. As a dancer, I've never faced any challenges other than like personally like in a dance team. But like with the community itself, I never experienced that because I grew up in a, in a really diverse community. So dance allows people to connect with each other and to show how we feel. So Latin America, we have like the, the majority is we have like the big skirts, you know, it's to show how big we are, to show how vibrant we are and to show how much like we're there and to show everything that we are. Well, I've heard that dance is how you visually see music, you know? Because you can't see music, but dance is a way to actually see the music other than just to hear it. Um, as diversity, there's many different types of dances. You know, there's like modern ballet, there's hip hop. And then if you go to the different cultures, there's like zapateado, there's folklorico, there's like other different types of dances from different countries. So, well, if you have like a, bit of, a bunch of people who are interested in learning how to dance and who want to participate, that is one way you can bring people together. You can. Um, that's what LSA does actually. We promote that we have a dance team and that you don't have to be a dancer, you don't have to know anything. And that's, or that's how we bring people together. Like how I said before, it's a way of expressing how we feel and um, it shows other people that have never seen this type of dancing. It shows them like there's other type of dances. It can lead to, for them to be interested in it, which can be in future terms where they can participate in it. Yeah. My name is Bola Nusa, but everyone knows me by Napa. Um, I'm from Rose Park, Utah, up in Salt Lake, and I am Samoan. I, I dance with the, the PISA club over here at SUU. What we specialize in is Polynesian dances, so that's anywhere from uh, Hawaii, Samoa, Tonga, Tahiti, or Fiji. So for example, for me, I'm Samoan, there's one that we do that's the, it's the ending dance for every showcase, Sasa. Sa. That one is literally just, you're, you're dancing and you're, you're talking about your day um, back on the island. Um, so talking about from when you get up to when you go to sleep. In terms of cultural identity, um, again, it's hard to keep hold of your culture being, you know, my parents moved here from Samoa to the States. So uh, to continue to learn about your culture while trying to learn a whole different culture over here. That, that's probably been the hardest thing growing up. But dance is just one of those ways where you can, you know, learn more about your, your history, your culture, and um, keep it around in your life and continue to pass it down to your, your children and generations to, to come. But I feel like dance does bring people together. Um, I mean, for example, for the showcase, we invite everybody to come out and dance. You don't even have to be Polynesian to dance. Um, but it's just a great way to learn about each other, um, learn other cultures, and really just to get to know each other. It doesn't matter if you dance or not. Again, I'm not the greatest dancer. <laughs> I just kind of do whatever. But it's just a fun way to get people together and um, learn about each other. And it doesn't even have to be about the culture. It's just 
learn what we like to do and how we can have fun. Piali no chime, no toca Kibel Gutierrez Monroy, mi totiani, no mexica, no chichimeca, no maya, no español, one no francés. Hello, my name is Kepa Gutierrez Monroy. I am an Aztec dancer and I am a, a Mexica woman of the Aztec nation. The history of the dance that I specialize in is Aztec dancing, so danza azteca. And the history was more back then, like in ancient times. It was just for rituals. And nowadays, because of that, like we don't sacrifice people and we don't, you know, offer ourselves anymore like that for the gods. We um, actually just, you know, do it as a preservation for our culture. And we, and we do do it spiritually for us and for anyone around us and to bless anyone who, has seen, who is seeing us dance. But this is as close as I can get. That makes me feel that I am who I am and that I am with the people that I want to be with, which are my ancestors. Representation is a big thing. So for me, since coming here, it's been hard to find someone with the same background as me. If, if I were to see someone like me right now, dancing right now in like, in the middle of the street, I'd be like, oh my gosh, they're like me. That's me, oh my gosh. Like, I finally found someone who I can relate to in a way. And it's also very hard when it comes to like people who, you know, like you're dancing and like, I understand that a lot of people are curious about like what this means, what this is. And I guess from my part is just to be patient with them. Cause you know, a lot of people are curious and a lot of people aren't trying to always be malice. Cause there has been times where um, some people, you know, they get really excited. And then since I have feathers, they're like, oh wow, I, like, you know, they, they grab the feathers or they try to grab the feathers and I have to be very patient and not react too much because at the end of the day, sadly, I feel like if I react badly, it's gonna not only look bad on me, but also other dancers who are dancing with me. And so those are some challenges that I have to go through when it comes to performing in a predominantly white area. And so by, and I figured out by like just dancing and you know getting closer to my roots that that can promote diversity someone someone it's so sim it's not so simple but someone could also be feeling like how I am and, it, and especially in our communities it happens all the time there's so many people that deny who they are and don't teach their children like who they actually are and so having someone see me dance probably also open like their eyes and, be, and realize hey I'm not just this I'm more than this I need to connect with my roots I want to connect with my roots for me especially and especially in Danza Azteca it's about self-expression and uh, definitely like to preserve what we what most people like what we barely have because of colonization and so especially doing it in like in the arts, it's like a gateway for everyone else to see. Mm -hmm.